Uh, it's really a pleasure to be here with you today uh, in the beautiful city of uh, Merida. So I am Emily Renge, and I'm uh, an educational and techno-pedagogical consultant. And I'm here to talk about the festive calendar in Moodle as a professional development tool that we created last year. So as you can hear, English is definitely not my first language. So I will do my best and I really thank you for your patience. So I am working in University of Quebec in Rimouski. It's a small university located in Eastern Canada in the province of Quebec. We are really a small university, so we have about 7,000 students who are studying on our two campuses that are 300 kilometers apart. So we have one campus in Rimouski and we have one campus in Levy. We have about 180, 186 program and I would say that most of our students, I would 75% are in undergraduate studies. So who we are, uh, I'm working in a pedagogical center and I have five wonderful, uh, four wonderful colleagues, so we are a team of five. So I just created avatar, like Disney Pixar, Pixar style avatar to just present ourselves into our festive calendar. So we are on both campuses, we are three consultants in Rimouski and two consultants in uh, the campus of Levy. So what we do as an educational consultant, well, we support the best practices, we promote, uh, we support the teacher actually, sorry about that. We promote the best practices and we improve, we hope, the quality of teaching. So we offer several training, training workshops through the year um, and uh, we are there for the teacher to just improve the teaching experience and by helping the teacher to teach better, we hope that we can improve the student learning experience too, and that's the point. But let's face it, what we really do is Moodle support. So I would say that 75% of our Moodle, re uh, the requests that we receive are Moodle related. So we receive all kinds of questions, most of all on grade books and quiz, and the question exactly like you actually. So I receive many, many questions, and we also often get comments like, Moodle is boring. Moodle is really hard to learn. My students don't see little and don't have any interest in it. And I'm so happy you said that. I only use Moodle just to drop my PDF. So here's come the PDF graveyards. So I'm really happy that it's not how in our university that we can find a course like that. So for the people who don't know what is a PDF Graveyard actually is just a Moodle course that the one you, that you can see on the right and you scroll down and it's just a PDF list and you know what sometimes you can find a Word document too it still exists okay so with kindness and gentleness we have to uh, learn to the teacher how to better use Moodle. So we have uh, to do, like to take the teacher from here and we have to bring them there. So through a self-paced coaching, one-on-one, -on -one, we have to show them how to better use Moodle. But at their own pace, as an educational consultant, 
I am not in front and try to bring the teacher with me. And I'm not behind, try to push them at the top of the mountain. I am side by side at their own pace. So I have to show them, instead of just using the file in the folder and the URL, how to set an assignment, how to use a forum. We have to change the mindset of the teacher. So now the Moodle is just boring, will become, oh well, I can customize it. And the most important thing, when, it's, when we hear Moodle is hard to learn, yeah, maybe, but now I have a team that I can count on to help me to learn Moodle. So it's my job, is to just one foot at a time, one step at a time, climb the mountain Moodle with my teachers. And actually, it's quite a beautiful job ever. So they will use the assignment, the forum, and then the page, the quiz, and maybe one day it will be the databases or even the wiki or the workshop. Because the reality, I'm a teacher myself, and I really care about my students, and the teacher really care about their students, and they really want to make a difference, definitely. They want to improve uh, the learning process. But like me, like you, I'm pretty sure, uh, energy is a limited amount, right? So we really want to make sure that our time, our energy, and our effort are well invested. And and that's exactly the same for all the teachers. So we realized that even knowing it, the teacher was just using the RISE uh, scoring model. So I don't know if you know about that model, but it's just a, a model use, a framework use actually to prioritize the task or the project. And we have four key factors. So we have the reach times the impact times the confidence and you divide everything by the effort that you put in a project. So as a teacher, I want to reach my student and I want to reach most of them. But I also want to have an impact, an impact on their learning process, on the learning outcomes. But I really need the confidence. And that's the point in higher education. Teaching is not the first task, it's research. So the professor and the teacher are really good at research. But when it comes to education, most of them didn't study in education. So sometimes they don't have confidence that they will be able to do one change or to implement a new strategy. So that's our job to give them the confidence to try something new. And most of all, the effort. How many time and energy I will put in that? How many hours I need to learn a new tool and to try something different? Will my student just realize how much time I put in it? So is it worth it? So it's with that in mind that we thought, okay, as a um, team, how can we help our teachers? How can we help them to just put less effort, but to have a big impact on their teaching experience? So we thought about uh, doing like an advent calendar, a festive calendar, when we will just give them one resource a day, like a chocolate, for the first 24 days of December. That sounds great, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and to ensure the success of the project, we just set ourselves guideline based on the, the RICE model. Okay, so the point was the teacher must know within five minutes max if the resource, if, if the proposed resource was suitable for him or for her. So the resource must be simple results, cost effectiveness, time, optimization, confidence. So those were our guidelines to build the resources that we gave to our teacher through the month. 
And then we just thought, okay, how can we just uh, implement everything and organize everything? So we plan a calendar uh, in three different tematics. So the first week was really um, to propose new resources for the teachers and for the students too. So we build some resources just to give them to the teacher so the teacher can give them to their students. So it was a gift for the students. Uh, the second week was about correction because honestly, um, few teachers knows about how to correct in Moodle directly on PDF and or how to give feedback. And we think it's really something important to give feedback to the students. So the second week was all about correction in Moodle. And the last week was, okay, well, next it's time to get ready for the next semester. So we gave them like uh, icebreaker activity resource and stuff like that so they can prepare for the next semester. And wherever you see a Christmas gift, that's my favorite part, actually. It's a uh, Christmas activity. So December 1st, you remember the avatar that I created? So I built a playlist with that, and it was all of uh, favorite Christmas songs. And it's December 10th, it was how to create a Christmas card for your students in Canva. And on December 18, actually, it was really nice. I asked to the rector of university to do a video to show, not to show, to tell everyone and to wish everyone Merry Christmas. And my favorite one is actually December 23rd, where I just collect everyone recipe cookie in the team and I built a recipe cookie book. So that was really fun. So how we build it, it was really uh, important for us to uh, build the entire calendar into Moodle because actually we want to set an example and we want to show teacher how can they better use Moodle. So that was the point. So for the enrollment and communication, uh, as we already have a Moodle portal for our teacher, we just use the course MetaLink to enroll all the teacher in our festive calendar. But we also, left the course self-enrollment because if a student or someone who is more working in another service can just uh, consult the calendar. We use the news forum to communicate with our participant once a week. For the course settings, it was the tile format. I really like the tile format. We use the date restriction, so of course, one tile each day. And we enable the completion tracking and we add completion conditions so we can just follow uh, the tracking process of the teacher. And for the course design, it was really simple. It was text and media zone, Fafa icon to add more fun in it. We use, we use uh, H5P to build some interactive activity and we add uh, Panopto because uh, it's the um, plugin that we use at our university to share the videos. So that's it. It's our festive calendar. So it's quite simple actually, but I find it really cute. So 24 ties, 24 days, and 24 resources. So just to give you an idea, in one tile, it was really simple actually. And it was always the same frame. So you add the title, a brief description, you add the resource itself. And we just decided to use at the bottom a tool used section so we can just list what we used and then the teacher could try them if they want. Few words about the outcomes of the project. So here's a resume of our results and statistics. So we had 196 participants. So for us, it's definitely our best project ever. So when we are giving um, 
uh, formation or uh, workshop, we rarely exceed 35 people. So for us, 196 was way over the expectations. And look at the number of the visit. We hit the thousand mark a day. So that's quite amazing. So that means that teacher were just coming back again and again to consult the calendar and their resources. And what you can see on this graph and what it's, I think, the most satisfying for me, it's that in January, the calendar just hit another peak. So the people and the teacher were coming back in January to build the next semester. So that was really awesome. And you can read some comments that we receive about the project. So actually, it was really, really amazing. So now it's time to assess the project. So definitely our best project ever. It was reused by other services, so the Student Help Center and other education program reused the resources, so we were really happy about that. Uh, and we were able to incorporate resources after we closed the calendar in February in our existing portal, so that was really nice. Few words about the best practices. In post, the course enrollment was really a good idea because the self-enrollment only, uh, the impact wouldn't have been the same. So the in post was really a nice idea. And using the forums too, because when we just sent an email each Monday morning to say, hi guys, I hope you are doing well. Here's the new resources that you will get, stay tuned. And uh, the number of visits just peaks uh, after uh, we send the message. So we were really happy about that. And a few words, uh, the project was supported by the university management at the beginning. So I asked to the rector, Francois, you really have to do a video to wish everyone Merry Christmas. And the rector told me, sure, can I do something funny? Yeah, right, you can do something for me. So the day we just shoot the video, we were like with the video guy and in a small room and he told us, okay, turn around. What do you mean, turn around? No, no, turn around, okay. And he puts on his pajama pants. So actually our rector just filmed a video in pajama pants, say, wishing everyone happy Christmas. Priceless, thank you Francois for that. So the lesson learned though, God, we put energy in that project, effort was way too high. We didn't count how many hours collectively as a team we put in that project, but God, it was time, but it was really worth it. But we will have to find a way, because as a team we are creating resources through the year, so we will have to think about how to promote the resource that we create through the year, instead of creating 24 new resources for December, right? It has to be sustainable. So what we will do uh, this year, actually we don't know yet, but teachers are already asking us what we will do and we don't know. So maybe it will be a 12 days of Christmas. So half, 24, maybe it will be less time consuming. And one of the thing I think um, we will do maybe, I hope, it's to use the learning map plugin. So I don't know if you know that plugin. For us, uh, it's new. We just added the plugin in August and actually we find it really cool. And we really love the option that we have to show or hide the learning path, to show or hide the map and all the visual animation that you can have in it. But the most important thing for us is that unlike H 5P, we can add completion tracking and completion condition because the learning map is using Moodle activity. And that, I think, the most important thing for the teachers. They want to be able to track the progress of their student and they want to add the activities to the gradebook. So I think we will figure something around the 12 days of Christmas with the new the learning map plugin. 
So it's Christmas in two months, but it's already Christmas. Did you saw the big Christmas store on the, oh God, it's amazing. Like you have to get a look of that. So since it's Christmas soon, uh, if you scan the QR code and click on the link that you can download on the Moodle program, you will download automatically a zip file. It will contain in English or in French, and I translated myself. Uh, the 24 pictures of the tile, you will get, get the MBZ file already set with the pictures, the restriction dates, and we, I added, I can't remember, eight or 10 resources that I translate. You will have it in JPEG, in PDF, and in the Moodle too. So you will have the description, the resource, and the tool use section. So you're all set to add the festive calendar in your institution for December. <laughs> So that's it. Thank you really much for being here today. It's, it's my first presentation. And in English too, it's my first one. So thank you so much and have a wonderful mood. Thanks. Now it's time for question. You know what, I was really fast. We have five minutes, guys. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much for this good presentation. I have a question. So you had the tiles format and every section was uh, one tile, right? And if, for example, a teacher pops in on December the 5th, could he or she see the, uh, in, the content of December 1, 2, 3, 4 as well? Yeah, so definitely. So progress, yeah, okay. Yeah, and um, I didn't mention it, but on the calendar of December, you can see that on December 21st, we remove all the restriction dates until December 24th, but actually teacher or in vacation. But you know what they went, huh? We just uh, look at the stats, and the teacher look at the calendar on December 24th and I was the first impress for that. <laughs> so it was, I was really happy, but definitely, so each day a new tile open, but the teacher have access to the ties before, but they won't see uh, the tile who is coming tomorrow, and that's the, the point, uh, it's like candy. They wanna come back and check the new resource. Thank you very much. Uh, well, I don't have a question. Basically, what I want to suggest is that since you make us that gift uh, here, why don't you just upload it, the uh, MBZ file in Moodle.net as well, so the whole world can have it. Create an account in Moodle.net, and uh, you can start it with the whole world. Ah, definitely, and I will give a bottle of wine to the people who translate everything in Spanish because definitely I'm not able to do that. So it could be great to have the calendar in Spanish too. So yeah, that's Thank a you. good idea. There's a question just over Another. there. Salut Amélie. Hey. Félicitations. Merci. Uh, I'm uh, Sandra Gabriel from uh, Université Concordia oui. from Montreal. <laughs> so we're coming from the same province. <laughs> Just a question. Did you track the um, implementation of some of the tools and resources uh, for your profs to see were they actually implementing them into their courses? Not really. We don't, uh, we don't have access to that kind of information, but one thing for sure, the tile format is now the new format because uh, usually it's a section or, uh, yeah, or week actually, but now tile format is really on demand. So just for that, it was really worth it because we really want to ex escape the PDF graveyard. So we are trying really hard to show our teacher new example and uh, like, good practice to use with Moodle. And even if it's simple, like you, we have to take the teacher where they are. So even if it's just add the text and media zone to just organize the resource itself, it's a, a, a foot in front of the other.
Well, first of all, congratulations. I love your idea. Um, two little questions. Um, how you show the every tool in a video or a presentation or uh, what resource do you use to show every tool? And if the teachers, the participants, have a, a space where they can practice to use the tools, uh, Moodle course of. Yeah, so it was different. Each day was different. So we tried to use a H5P interactive video or a video uh, or a PDF or an infographic. So it was always something different. So we can show all the range that we can do. Uh, and for the practice, actually, the teacher uh, can ask for a sandbox. So if they want to practice something, they can ask us to create a sandbox course so they can and just practice but honestly it was really uh, easy to implement so the point was that the teacher can just take the resource and bring them in uh, class the week after or the day after so the point the rice model here is really really important it has to be really simple to give them confidence to make the first step to change something and to improve their teaching experience so that that was really the point it was really simple to implement. Um, hi, I'm Dunja from Germany. Here. Where are you? Here, okay, here, sorry. Here. And I want to tell you, it's I'm a teacher. It's so lovely and it's such a sweet idea. And I want to thank you for choosing the learning Mac because my colleague wrote it. And we were very happy when we saw it. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Hey, bye, guys. Thank you.